House of Justice announced to the world that the shrine of Abdu'l Baha would be built adjacent to the Rizwan Garden and that the sacred remains of Abdu'l Baha would be moved there. This brought awe and wonderment to all of us in the Baha'i world, especially at the Baha'i World Center. I believe each one of us can remember where we were when we heard the Shrine of Abdul Baha is going to be constructed. Every one of us are participant in this process by praying, by donating, and then perhaps interacting directly with its implementation. Our team consists of landscape architects, civil engineer, and architects who are already relocated to Haifa, working on the project as well as the other devoted friends from around the world who are offering their technical expertise to assist us with the project. The construction site for the project is within Resbon Garden proper, which consists of three different gardens. One of them is Ferdos Garden, the second Ali Ashraf Garden, and third one Resbon Garden. The project is located within two of these gardens, Ali Ashraf Garden and Ferdos Garden. In the northwest corner of Ferdos Garden, there is a small structure which Abdul Baha used to stay in whenever he would come to visit. In one of his talks to the friends Abdul Baha had mentioned that if anything happens to him, he should be buried under the sand between Akka and Haifa, where it's the pathway of pilgrims. So this land, I think, was chosen, was in between Akka and Haifa. This project, uniqueness and challenges come from several fronts. The site, geotechnical condition, geographical location, and also historical location of the site, it provides certain background to certain constraints and variables that we need to interact with when we're doing the shrine implementation. The geotechnical condition of the site does not allow for a proper bedrock. Therefore, we had to design and construct our own bedrock, which was consist of combination of series of piles, which are 12 to 15 meter deep, supporting a concrete slab, which is separating the existing site from the structure itself that would be constructed above. I started to study some papers that the House of Justice had given. And in those papers, there are references to the beauty of gardens that Abdul Baha enjoyed very much. He relates a story about his childhood when in Tehran, his grandfather 
made a garden that they used to sleep there. And in the morning, he says, when you got up, all the birds were singing and the poplar trees that his grandfather had planted, the leaves of those trees, they moved and it was like people clapping. He recalls the beauty of that garden and the fragrance of the flowers, very fond memory that he has mentioned. And uh, I thought this garden idea is very important for his resting place. I knew the building related to him should not be imposing. This was the main concept at the beginning. Because he is the symbol of humility. The avenues are arranged in a pattern of a sunburst. His resting place is under this here, in this room. But before coming to this room, to go through stages of meditation, after we constructed our slab, then the implementation of the shrine and design main geometry, which is consists of two major walls with the different characteristics, which stretch from north to south, and is giving us a five distinct area for the project. Why do we go for pilgrimage? We want to meditate and ponder in his character and him being the greatest example. So we would have time to meditate on our way to that room. You come to where the Rezvan Garden was. We have kept the old wall of this previous garden as an existing feature referring to his time and then coming to an access turning right you will see the shrine which would be under this garden and walking through this forecourt coming under this archway you will be under the trellis like a sunburst, the pattern of the avenues of the garden. A pattern which is very common in Persian architecture and creates the beautiful forms of the domes and covers the preparation area around the room of the shrine. The roof structure of the shrine has a very interesting and intricate geometry. It is a combination of two sets of 16 ribs intersecting each other. The pattern that these ribs create are a series of openings, which are skylights that let the daylight in to the plaza below. The top of this roof structure will be gardens, whereas the underside of these ribs will be cladded with white marble. The landscape design within our Baha'i property has a very unique character which is well known to many. The existing palette, which was developed by our beloved guardians 
consist of plants, trees, shrubs, flowers, materials and colors. At the Shrine of the Bab and the Shrine of Baha'u'llah, we have primary color flower beds. So you have red and blue and yellow flowers in those gardens. At the new Shrine of Abdul Baha, we're going to have different colors. So you're going to have white and blue and lavender kind of color with a hint of pink in, in one of the seasons. So you have to come by and see that. <laughs> we have uh, lots of hedges in the Shrine of the Bab and Baha'u'llah. But in the new Shrine for Abdul Baha, we won't have any hedges. Uh, we just have a very large uh, lawn area that will be outlined by very small shrubs. Your circumambulation path, this is one of the paths that leads to the south entrance of the shrine. It'll be one of these. As the shrine is being built in Akko, adjacent to Rizwan Garden, the contractor that is employed there has mainly Arab workers. When consulted, those Arab workers enter the construction site with a sense of reverence, and many of them convey that they have family who have stories of Abu Baha, of Abbas Effendi, and feel so honored to be able to work on his shrine to come to the work site every day and know that they are contributing in whatever small way they can to this incredible building. Abdu'l-Baha's reputation in the Haifa Aqua area remains alive and well. People have relatives who remember and have heard stories of Abdu'l-Baha that have been transmitted from relatives throughout their family. Of course, he was called Abbas Effendi, and particularly the people of Akko consider him a native son of Akko and are overjoyed with the prospect of his sacred remains returning home.